It's ready. Anything that you like. Yeah. Uh, Hank, can I have I, I have a, a couple questions when you yeah. were talking earlier. You said something to the effect that, um, you know, when Moses went to um, the Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And there was this code um, that Pharaoh didn't know that Moses had found the 72 letters. And but you said something that that Moses was able to overcome the Zodiac. Yes. So my question is, is can that it was that a gift to Moses alone or it can we all overcome the Zodiac? great question that's a great question so the gift was originally given to adam and eve in the book of raziel which i teach in the course called abracadabra which uh, uh, we haven't begun the course yet and it goes by application based on certain like uh, readinesses but um all of us can activate that that's the answer this is a short answer Eventually, it was taught to uh, to Noah, you know, and then to his sons Shem, Ham, and Yefet, but specifically to Shem, which uh, he dealt with essences. Shem means essence in reality, and then Shem eventually taught it to Abraham and his wife Sarah. Okay, and then Abraham eventually taught it to seventy core students. Okay. Uh, that were receive, able to receive because the issue was being able to receive it. The issue wasn't so much about like, oh, like he only picked those. It was like those were the ones that had the vessel to receive it. You know, they were ready and they were, had desire, right? And those 70 had the vessel to receive it. They had desire. Then from those 70, he also tied it to Isaac and Isaac tied it to Jacob. Uh, and then uh, Jacob taught it to the 12 tribes which are that represent each one part of the zodiac. Joseph developed his own way of seeing it with his wife and his people. And Joseph ended up in, in Egypt where he dealt with it on a very, very secluded and diluted level in order to transcend from 50 gates of negativity to the 50 gates of positivity. Uh, and then eventually from all those tribes of teaching it spread throughout the world and got lost sparks everywhere here and there. Uh, but it was like, you know, broken pieces, you know. Um, then um, there was 210 years of exile of consciousness in Egypt, in Mitzrayim, where the children of those 12 tribes experienced 210 years of very, very, very diluted and like loss of consciousness so they can appreciate the real consciousness when it gets revealed again. And then the appreciation came when Moses was born. That's when the Pharaoh realized, oh my God, something is changing. That was the first great reset, you know. Uh, and so it was re-revealed to Moses and Aaron, his brother and their wives and children. Uh, and then they revealed it to three million people on Mount Sinai or more. 600,000 souls plus their related people next to them, which was 3 million people. So on Mount Sinai, we experienced all, and anybody that's here listening to this right now, your soul was, was at Mount Sinai because people will not get attracted to this teaching at this level if they weren't part of the original essence of it. That's just one of the rules of this. It's like if you're here, your soul was at Mount Sinai. They, they, you're coming back to yourself, you know? So... Because I know some people that I'll tell them about these teachings and they're just like zero attraction to it. Like it's just like, you know, so uh, their soul is just not either wasn't part of it or is not ready for it and may, might evolve into it later. But it's, this is how it is. So um, so now at Mount Sinai, we experienced full immortality. And um, for the first time in history, since the Garden of Eden reality, we experienced full immortality and it says they were. They were able to see they were able to see the voices and hear the visuals right we talked about this before i think uh which is a very unique phenomena that occurs in prophecy and downloading and channeling and um but it was very short-lived right uh they um lost they lost the ability to be fully in immortality mode very quickly through the golden calf energy which was an intermediary um, 
However, Moses and certain students, including Joshua and certain people of the 70 students and uh, those who did not fall into this realm and those who made a comeback after they fell retained this energy okay they retained the energy and taught it continuously um, until all the way till um, the temple of solomon for 200 years there was world peace temple of solomon teachings and then from then on, it became hidden uh, to the mystics and the Kabbalists, including Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who wrote the Zohar down for the first time about 2,000 years ago, around the same time that Jesus lived. Um, and then he encoded it into a way so that the students uh, would learn it. And then it continued that way. This is actually a good question because it helps you also understand the lineage of what I'm teaching you here. So from there, uh, for 2,000 years, it was hidden from teacher to student. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai actually wrote it down when he was in a cave for 13 years. Um, and for 2,000 years, it was taught teacher to student. It was never allowed to be taught in public because of the misunderstandings that it would occur. And, um, and also, we were avoiding translations because we knew it would fall into the wrong hands and then turn into what we have today, which is the religious chaos and political chaos. So then eventually about uh, about a couple of hundred years ago, Rabbi Avram Azulai, who was a powerful reincarnation of one of the great souls, he made it clear that it is now time to begin revealing it slowly to humanity, to those who, who can grasp it. But many forces stopped it, including religious people that had the understanding of reading it, but they had blockages, you know. Um, so for another two, three hundred, two hundred years or so, it was blocked, right? Um, then the Zohar itself was printed heavily, millions of copies, uh, just about the past forty years. So after, you know, like think about it like this: after five thousand seven hundred eighty-five years of creation, the Zohar was just published, millions of copies, only the, the past forty years, you know. And it was sent all over the world uh, through many of my my teachers and people that I know, and um, and then finally, um, so so me personally, the way I, you know, experience these soul codes is, I come directly from the lineage of S uh, Solomon and David, and my mom comes directly from the lineage of Moses and Aaron. Their their bloodline to Moses and Aaron both physically and spiritually, right? So um, my mom's parents both come from that, but they were also experiencing a blockage too, right? So the teachings never became so clear as it did in this past 25 years with me and obviously with them now until it uh, reached my soul. Okay. And which is interesting because, so I was living with my parents that have these teachings in their being, but they didn't, um, they, they had lost the ability to express it at this level. And so I started to, um, I started to meet with certain angelic beings and other teachers when I, in my, when I was 18, and I started to have an awakening, and this entire system re-downloaded itself to me through the blueprints of these meditations and those years I spent alone with myself and working with these angelic beings. And then I worked on manifesting as much as possible into recordings and books. And like, it was just like a pouring on of gold and I was just like trying to catch as much as possible, which was very scary at the same time. <laughs> because it was like, no, I don't want to lose that over here. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I did in the past, I would say 25 years recapturing the sparks into the vessel and then spending time at the same time figuring out who's my student and how I should use it and how I should teach it and how I should formulate so it's understandable and 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 also avoiding cancellations from all the you know culture that we have from anything that you say that is not according to what people want you know to be kind of attacked for it you know 
So it was a, it's been a big, very difficult journey to actually retain this and archive it and teach it and only teach it to the right people and keep it away from the wrong people. So um, that's been the lineage so far. And in order to be able to express it in the most up-to-date modern method that people understand, I also did a lot of you know studies like scientific studies, hypnotherapy studies, neurolinguistic studies, uh, integrative psychology studies, communication skills studies, so that you know the ancient wisdom from modern times, so it's, people can understand it in the most you know modern terminology. You know. Um, so that's a little bit of, so is it, uh, can we use this wisdom? Absolutely. Are we able to ascend into this wisdom? Absolutely. Um, can we override the cosmic realm and not fall into the trap of the cosmic realm? The first step to that is becoming conscious of what's happening in the window of opportunity and tapping into it. The second step is working as a community because we can't do it alone, right? It's the forces of the forces of negativity is way too much to go at it alone. Um, so we're doing this, you know, as a group right now, group consciousness. That's why I said, hey, let's all tune in at that time together also. Because we, when we have each other, we're on the train. Even if the train goes, the train's going this way. Even if you walk backwards, one person, we're all carrying each other, right? And uh, yes, absolutely. And the process of this soul code is to slowly and gradually teach you all of the both 72 names and, and the letters and elements so that we can all begin to rise over the cosmic limitations. Um, and Aries is the perfect month to start tuning into that because it's the seed of the masculine years, so to speak. Um, so, let's see. That was a great question. Uh, Thank I, you. I enjoyed answering it. <laughs> <laughs>